Hi guys! In this video, we will test and review the ACMR P1 laser engraver. You want to know all the details? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! My name is Rui, and this is the Rui Raptor YouTube channel. If you want to help us out, you can by giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also help by joining our Patreon page or by clicking on any of the affiliate links posted below in the video description. So, in this video, we will assemble, test and review one more laser engraver. This time we have the ACMR P1 laser engraver equipped with a 10 watt output laser module. But first, let's start with the unboxing. Right at the top, we can find a couple of wooden boards and the manual. Next are the protection goggles and the power cord. Several screws and tools for the assembly. One more wooden sample. A bag with some accessories, which includes a memory card, a card reader, a couple of keys to turn on and off the laser, a fitting, and zip ties. Next we have the laser mount plate, the power supply, the laser module and the x-axis. Under the foam we have the USB cable, the back profile, the front profile and finally the two side profiles. Ok, this is everything that came inside the package. This is the manual that comes with the machine. It looks detailed and at the end it includes the instructions to set up the laser on Lightburn and GRBL. And this is the power supply. This one is a 24 volt and 3 amp model. The laser, as we already mentioned, is a 10 watt output power. However, on the sticker this information is wrong. It is stated only 1 watt. At the bottom there is a shield secured by magnets and comes already with the nozzle for the air assist pre-installed, even if you don't buy the air assist kit. At the top is the small board and cooling fan. And this is the front panel. At the back is the controller board. Also at the back and next to the controller is a small antenna. This is for the Wi-Fi communication. And finally, the X-axis. The X-axis carriage comes equipped with a small axis to manually move the laser up and down. The X and Y axis stepper motors are both installed here, same as both X and Y and stop switches. The manufacturer also has some accessories available such as the rotary device which allows to engrave on round materials. Also included are the feet to raise the engraver. This one comes fully assembled and it allows adjustments of the roller's positions which means we can engrave small materials such as pencils and big ones like glasses for example. They also have the air assist which includes all the accessories. The air assist module has the airflow adjustment at the top, on one side the on and off switch and the power connector and the air output on the opposite side. On the bottom side it has a big cooling fan and flexible rubber feet to absorb the vibrations. They also have honeycombs with different sizes. This is a very handy accessory if you plan on using the laser to cut materials. Ok, and now let's start with the assembly. For the first step we will need the two slide profiles and the x-axis. The side profiles have orientation, so you need to face them with the three holes facing the front and the smooth side facing the outside. The profile with the scale will be installed on the left side. So, take the X axis and slide in one of the side profiles carefully between the wheels. If the profile doesn't go through, don't force it or you might damage the wheels. Take the wrench and turn the two eccentric nuts to increase the wheel's grip and this way allow the profile to go through. Do the same for the other profile. With the side profiles in, 
adjust the wheel's grip by turning the two eccentric nuts again. We made a video explaining how to correctly adjust the wheel's grip, so check this video description for the link. Next, get the back plate, one M5 by 25 and one M5 by 16 screw. Use the long screw at the top and the short screw at the bottom. Do the same for the other side. And then take the front plate and attach it like this. Use a couple of long screws at the top and one short screw at the bottom. Same for the other side. Make sure everything is squared. Ok, the main structure is assembled. Now we need to secure the cable chain. Start with the left side and next to the controller. Use three flat M3 by six screws to secure it. Make sure the cable chain is parallel with the frame. Secure the other end above the Y-axis stepper motor. Again with the three screws. Then pass the cable chain over the top and secure it with the three screws. Make sure the cables are not twisted or stretched. And finally secure the other end of the cable chain at the back of the X-axis carriage. Again with the three screws. Next, move all the axes around and make sure they move freely and the cables as well. Next, take the laser mount and secure it with a couple of M3 by 10 screws. and then secure the laser module with four M3 by eight screws. There are a couple of belts on each side profile to drive the Y axis. These need to go between the profile and the first bottom wheel. Then around the pulley, and again between the profile and the second wheel. The belt then needs to go through the back plate and then secure it with an M5 by 8 screw and square washer. Make sure you hold the belt at this point to maintain the belt's tension. Do the same procedure for the other side. Finally, move the Y axis back and forth and check if the belt's tension is correct. The idea is that the Y-axis moves freely but without gaps on the belt. Now it's time to connect the cables. First connect the Y-axis stepper motor and then the Y-axis end stop switch. Next connect the X-axis stepper motor and the X axis and stop switch. Last but not least, pass the remaining cable through the carriage plate like this and connect the laser module. On the X carriage there are a couple of eccentric nuts as well. Don't forget to adjust the wheel's grip of this carriage too. And the assembly is now complete. This is how the laser engraver looks like. The engraving area is 400 by 410 millimeters. At the front, we can see the emergency stop button, the key to lock the laser and the on and off switch. If you have the emergency button triggered, just turn it clockwise and it will pop out. To trigger it, just push it down. At the left side we have the power connector, the USB connector, the memory card slot and a connector for an external display that works as a control console. The X-axis carriage has a knob that allows some Z movement of the laser module. 
This is handy to adjust the laser focus. And at the side, there's a probe that is used to find the correct distance between the laser and the material. Both left y-axis and x-axis profiles have a metric scale on them. OK, we are now ready to turn the laser on and test it. First, we need to connect the power cable, the USB cable so that we can control the laser with the computer, and a memory card in case we want to run the laser offline. We can load a G-code on the memory card and insert it on the memory card slot. Then, we insert the key in and turn it, and then push the on and off switch. Before we can start cutting or engraving, we need to adjust the laser focus distance according to the material we want to work on. And to do that, we only need to place the fixed probe down and lower the laser until the probe touches the material. If you plan to cut, it's recommended to lower a bit more past that point, depending on the material thickness. And done! We are ready to start working with the laser. Since we will be using the honeycomb and different types of materials to test the engraver, we installed one set of feet to raise it. On the memory card, we found some images and test patterns, so we started with that. We also have a demo of four images with different settings to test. These were done on an MDF board. Next, we tested engraving on cork. We also tested engraving on stone. Next, we tested cutting some 3mm MDF wood. Since it was able to cut 3mm MDF, we then tested with 10mm thick pine wood. And then with 15mm thick pine wood. And these are the results. This is the demo picture that came on the memory card. The letters and number are mirrored, but they were already like this on the file before engraving. Aside from that, we see the lines defined and the pictures are nicely made. And this is the four settings demo that was also on the memory card. They used four different image settings so we could see how the result would be. In this case, the two upper pictures look better since they are sharper. And this is our test on cork. The engraving looks solid. We had to use a low power percentage to avoid burning the cork too much. On stone, the results are also very nice. But then again, it's always easier to engrave on stone. And for the 3mm MDF cuts, we decided to try a tea house. These are always fun to make. When done, we hand-painted some of the parts and it turned out amazing. For the thicker cuts, this laser was able to cut 10mm thick pine wood with a few passes. For the 15mm thick, on the other hand, it didn't cut all the way through, but we believe that if we lower the laser a bit more and pass a few more times, it will be able to cut this as well. Also, we ran all the tests without the air assist, so if you run with it, it will cut it for sure. OK, now let's check all the pros and cons. On the positive side, we have This laser engraver is very easy to assemble and it will be ready to run in just a few minutes. The workable area is 400 by 410 millimeters, which is good enough. It's equipped with the emergency button and the security key. It has a metric scale on both X and Y axis. It has an easy system to manually move the laser up and down. However, we must point out the negative side, that the travel length on this Z axis is too short. It would be better if we could move the laser up and down a bit more. It has Wi-Fi so we can connect the laser to the computer without the USB cable. The 10 watt laser module does the job nicely and has a decent performance as it can cut and engrave with good results. And the fact that the manufacturer has many accessories available for it on their website. For the negative side, we also have the weak laser support mount as we can easily move it. Our front panel was not correctly bent and we can see that here at the corner. It's secured 
but it doesn't look right. And finally, the manual that, although it has lots of information, it does not include the instructions on how to set up the Wi-Fi connection. If you want to know all the settings for this laser, check our Patreon page as we will publish them very soon. And that's it you guys, hope you liked the video, we will see you guys next time, bye!